wait on thee. Renew our strength. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this new Sunday where we worship our Lord together here in this online space here at Sunshine Salvos on this Sunday, the 17th of July, 2022. Oh, goodness. It's a fairly intense movie that we were watching there just at the start of this service. Of course, it's telling us a bit of the story of Esther, which we're going to continue on with this day, as we particularly look at the story of Esther and look at the theme of fear, particularly how we really have to rise up and face our fears, just as Esther did. Very intense video clip. But it is good to be here with you today on this pretty cold, miserable Sunday morning here in Melbourne. But I pray that this morning you do feel the warmth of our fellowship together and knowing that you're a part of a family, a spiritual family here in the faith community at Sunshine Salvos. And we love you, we value you, and we welcome you and are glad you've joined us 
here this day. Of course, we gather together in separate places, but no matter where we are, we find ourselves on traditional lands. And I want to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land upon which we're gathered this day. I think of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I want to honour those ancestors of the past and those ancestors and leaders in our First Nations communities in the present and also honour future First Nations leaders and their aspirations. As a Salvation Army officer again, I state again the commitment of the Salvation Army Australia Territory to the process, reconciliation and walking alongside First Nations people achieving justice for them. We gather on lands that were never ceded by our First Nations people. They were, they are, they always will remain Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander lands. We begin this worship service this morning with a prayer in this call to worship and I invite you to pray as you join with me, raising up our worship and our prayers to God this day. You, my God, are the strong rock in whom I trust, my shade by the roadside, and all my confidence rests in you. Deep inside my mother's womb, you knew me. Before my limbs were formed, you yearned for me. Each of my movements you remember with compassion. And when I was still unseen, you did imagine me. Your strength brought me into the light. It was you who delivered me. Yours were the hands that held me safe. You cherished me upon my mother's breast. When I stammer, you form the words in my mouth. And when I am silent, you understand my thoughts. And if I shout and rage, you hear my plea and my uncertainty. And when I am afraid, you stay close to me. When I am full of terror, you do not hide your face. And if I struggle against you, you will contain me. And when I resist you, you will match my strength. Because you, my God, are my strong rock in whom I trust. You are my shade by the roadside and all my confidence I rest in you. Bless us this day in worship, rock of our salvation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to continue in an attitude of prayer this day. There are a number of our dear friends, part of our Sunshine Salvos family, who are really struggling in the, at the moment with their health. I think particularly of a number of people who have contracted COVID just in this past week. I think of the Tran family, Tan, Tao, Ella and Lana. I think of dear grandma, Baktan, who we just celebrated last week, her 100th birthday. Grandma contracted COVID in just these past few days. And that of course is a great concern considering the seniority of her years. I also think of my parents, Major Keith and Dorothy, who have had COVID and have just come out of it, but we pray that their restoration and healing will continue. I think of our dear brother, Norm, who just in these past two days has contracted COVID. There is so much COVID-19 in our community. It is literally spreading through our community at a rapid rate and our community of faith is a part of that spread. And so we have a number of people we lift up before the Lord 
this morning in prayer. Would you join with me as this day we pray?
Amen. Continue to pray for our dear friends in these very uncertain times. We worship today a great God, our God Jehovah, God of Israel, the God who millions of people have loved and worshipped as their God, particularly our spiritual ancestors and forefathers and foremothers in Israel. Jehovah Jireh is our provider and his grace is our sufficiency. He provides for our needs according to his riches in glory. We're going to sing this song, Jehovah Jireh, this day as we start to think about how our God does provide for us. He never lets us down. He always gives us what we need in our moments of need. Let us sing this day, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. May you know the truth of those words that Jehovah Jireh cares for you and provides for you at all times. Some announcements I need to make this day. This coming Tuesday, we have our Community Wills Day taking place at Sunshine Salvos at 42 Devonshire Road, Sunshine. That event is booked out. Community members have made booked appointments to see lawyers to begin the process of formulating their wills. That will take place, as I said, this Tuesday. This coming Saturday, for the Shine Ladies, there is going to be a fun afternoon of exercise and laughs and fellowship Saturday, the 23rd of July, 2 p.m. at our Sunshine Salvos Hall, a Zumba exercise afternoon for the ladies of Shine. Come along, be a part of warming up in this very cold winter and being amongst friends in a safe place where you can sweat and laugh and get healthy and have a great time in the process, ladies, this Saturday at 2 p.m. at our Sunshine Salvos Hall. Other announcements can be found in our newsletter, which is online on the Facebook group page, or you can get hard copies, of course, at our Sunshine Salvos Hall. That's all the announcements I have for this day.
in those moments in life when we are particularly stressed, feel burdened and anxious, we often find ourselves retreating into silence. Sometimes that silence can be fear driven. We're going to sing a song this morning that just reminds us that it's in the silence where we find God, that it's in the silence where his majesty is revealed, where we can stand before God in confidence before his throne in silence, but knowing that he knows us and we can be still and know he is God and that he is caring and loving us all the time in the silence of his majesty. We're going to sing this lovely prayerful worship song this day. Join with me as we sing in the silence. Yeah. 
May we all continue to yearn to hear the whisper of his voice, to know our Lord so dearly and intimately in our lives that our trust and our confidence in him builds and builds as our faith grows in his goodness and provision. Amen. A scripture reading this morning. Again, just like last week, it's a lengthy one. In fact, it's spanning two chapters of Esther. Esther chapters three and four. I've put together a video that reads the scripture far better than I could, far more eloquently and far more lovely a tone. Enjoy and grow and absorb the living word as it's brought to us this morning from Esther chapter three and four from the New International Version. Esther chapter three. After these events, King Xerxes honored Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, elevating him and giving him a seat of honor higher than that of all the other nobles. All the royal officials at the king's gate knelt down and paid honor to Haman for the king had commanded this concerning him. But Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor. Then the royal officials at the king's gate asked Mordecai, Why do you disobey the king's command? Day after day they spoke to him, but he refused to comply. Therefore they told Haman about it, to see whether Mordecai's behavior would be tolerated, for he had told them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor, he was enraged. Yet having learned who Mordecai's people were, he scorned the idea of killing only Mordecai. Instead, Haman looked for a way to destroy all Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout the whole kingdom of Xerxes. In the twelfth year of King Xerxes, in the first month, the month of Nisan, the pur, that is, the lot, was cast in the presence of Haman, to select a day and month. And the lot fell on the twelfth month, the month of Adar. Then Haman said to King Xerxes, There is a certain people dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom who keep themselves separate. Their customs are different from those of all other people, and they do not obey the king's laws. It is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. And if it pleases the king, let a decree be issued to destroy them, and I will give ten thousand talents of silver to the king's administrators for the royal treasury. So the king took his signet ring from his finger and gave it to Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of the Jews. Keep the money, the king said to Haman, and do with the people as you please. Then, on the thirteenth day of the first month, the royal secretaries were summoned. They wrote out in the script of each province, and in the language of each people, all Haman's orders to the king's satraps, the governors of the various provinces, and the nobles of the various peoples. These were written in the name of King Xerxes himself, and sealed with his own ring. Dispatches were sent by couriers to all the king's provinces with the order to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jews, young and old, women and children. On a single day, the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, the month of Adar, and to plunder their goods. A copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality, so that they would be ready for that day. The couriers went out, spurred on by the king's command, and the edict was issued in the citadel of Susa. The king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Susa was bewildered. Esther chapter 4 When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai, 
she was in great distress. She sent clothes for him to put on instead of his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to him, including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict for their annihilation, which had been published in Susa, to show to Esther and explain it to her. And he told him to instruct her to go into the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But thirty days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this? May God add wisdom to the reading of his word this day, to his name be glory and praise. We all have fears. None of us in truth can put our hand up and say we're completely fearless because if you're human, if you have a heart that beats blood, then you have something in your reality that you fear. That's part of being human. We all have fears. It could be a fear of heights. It could be a fear of spiders. It could be a fear of large crowds cramming you in. It could be a fear of water. It could be a fear of snakes. It could even be a fear of clowns. That seems to be a popular fear these days. I'm going to tell you my fear is another well-known fear. And it's a fear that's really called claustrophobia, being in an enclosed space. But I think even more than that, it's the fear of possibly, and my spine shivers as I even think about this, getting stuck somewhere where I wouldn't be able to move and I'd just be stuck there forever. That is my deepest fear. And you know, I can recall one particular moment, and I've probably shared it before in, in the context of church, crawling through tunnels under the ground in Vietnam, just outside of Saigon, tunnels that were built during the war by Viet Cong fighters during the Vietnam conflict. And now, of course, have become a tourist attraction where tourists can crawl through these tunnels and just imagine how horrible and awful it must have been to have to crawl through these tunnels like ants under the ground in, in avoiding the enemy. And so I remember clearly as a larger Western male crawling through a tunnel that was never built for someone my size and with the width of my shoulders and feeling so incredibly fearful in the dark, crammed in, crawling on my hands and knees with a person in front of me and a person behind me, just keeping going beyond fear, beyond my logic, which just wanted to go backwards because that's all I knew of where I'd come from, but going forwards into a scary unknown and hoping beyond hope that those tunnels didn't collapse as that paranoid fear began to just rise within me. I remember that awful moment, 
crawling through the Kuchi tunnels in Saigon, Vietnam. I remember also much more locally just having to endure a 13 minute MRI scan in one of those machines, which they are also an claustrophobic inducing apparatus. And that was a terrifying 30 minutes where I was enclosed within this metal cocoon and couldn't move and just felt as though I wanted to get out. Fear of being trapped in a small space paralyzes me. And so just in this past week, when I was watching the news and I saw a feature that reflected on the fact that soon there is going to be another movie coming out about the story of those 12 or 13 Thai boys who got trapped in a cave just a couple of years ago. A new movie coming out to uh, tell that story again. I was instantly transported into my deepest, darkest fear of being stuck or trapped in a cave in a dark place especially unable to move. We all have fears. We all have those moments where we develop a cold sweat and a feeling in our stomach. And we are all familiar with that feeling, that hollow feeling and just wanting to melt and disappear into the ground and get away from that which we're so scared of. Well, today in the story of Esther, this part of her story and Mordecai's story really does reflect on fear. And it really does bring us back to a place where we consider that fear in many ways produces two options. It's been described in physiological terms as a response to fear. We can have a fight or flight option. Fear in many ways does come down to those two options. And I love that anagram, which was, you might have noticed at the start of the worship, that fear, if we break it down into those letters, really does provide us with a clear picture of those two options. For we can either forget everything and run, or we can face everything and rise. We're going to look at Esther and see what her response was. We're going to also look at Mordecai and his response. The story as we just had it read to us so eloquently from Esther chapter 3 and 4, if I might summarize it very quickly, reminds us that there was an unscrupulous, evil bureaucrat in the kingdom of Persia named Haman. And he was close to the king and he rose in influence. Haman was an Agagite and traditionally they were an enemy of the Jewish nation. And so he had a particular prejudice and hatred for Jewish people. And that is revealed through the plot that unfolds through those chapters that we read. Haman is given a position of prominence in the kingdom such that whenever and wherever he goes, people are required to bow down to him, even as though he were a king or a deity. And people do that. But on one occasion, Mordecai, who is present, does not bow down to him and will not bow down to him. And he gives his reasons why he is a, a child of the God of Israel. He bows down to nobody except for a king or God. Haman is enraged and immediately begins this plot to eliminate, exterminate all the Jews out of Persia. Mordecai is fearful. And when he understands and this plot is uncovered and the plan by Haman to kill all the Jews when that is ratified by the king and put into an effect and a date is set for this mass genocide. Mordecai is full of mourning 
and fear and terror. And he clothes himself in sackcloth and pours ashes on himself in a traditional symbol of mourning and fear for what is to befall him and his people. He gets a message to Queen Esther. Remember, she is a Jew. And he says to her, you must do something. You must go to the king and you must dissuade him from this evil plan. And Queen Esther reminds Mordecai, you know, that there is a rule in place that you can't just go into the king's presence without being invited. I cannot just go in unannounced for he will most likely kill me. That is the law. And Mordecai says, well, do not think for a moment that if this edict comes to pass and all the Jews in Persia are murdered, do not think that you will be exempt. And Esther is left with a decision to make. Will she face her fears as a Jewish woman? And will she go to the king unannounced, risking her life? So dramatic was the video that we watched that we really got a sense of that, that drama and the dilemma that she faced. And she did that. And we're going to leave the story there for today. But I want to come back to those notions of fear. First, let's look at Mordecai. Mordecai was placed in a situation, a dilemma. Would he bow down to an unscrupulous, evil person like Haman, even though it was the law and a requirement that he bow down to Haman? Would he do it? In fear, Mordecai would have known clearly the consequence of not doing it. He potentially risked his life. Would Mordecai forget everything and run? Or would he face everything and rise? He rose. He stood on his feet and stayed upright. He would not bow. He faced his fear regardless of the consequences and remained true to his God, the God of Israel. And then we have Queen Esther. Her fears are also for her personal safety. Would she go to the king unannounced, uninvited? Would she have the strength and the courage to barge into his palace, into his presence and risk annihilation on behalf of her people? Or would she forget everything and run? Esther faced everything and rose. And she came into the presence of the king. They are the choices that we're left with in life, no matter what our story is, when it comes to facing our fears. Do we just forget everything and run away, hide away, hope it goes away? Do we stay hidden? Do we stay paralyzed in our fear, unable to move, unable to move forwards, unable to face the fears that grip us? Or do we take a stand? Do we face everything, face our fears and rise? Not just rise up to face our fears, but rise above them with our God helping us. My prayer in your life, in your story at this time, is that you would face everything and rise. That you would face your fears, that you would fight your fears, that you would be proactive in moving forwards in a trajectory that says to the things in life you fear the most, I am not going to be paralyzed and left unable to move by you. I am not going to be controlled by you. 
I am not going to be ruled over in my life by you. I am going to rise and I'm going to face you. I'm going to fight you and I'm going to defeat you. They're the choices we have. My prayer, as I said, is that you would choose to face everything and rise above your fears. Knowing, of course, that Jehovah Jireh is with us, that Jehovah Jireh is our strength, our rock, our comfort, our warrior, our everything. Rise to face the difficulties and the fears you have in your life, no matter what they are, fears of your mortality, fears of discomfort, fears of pain, fears of hardship, fears of illness, fears of anything in your life. Face them and rise, knowing that Jesus, who so often through his ministry reminded those who followed him, do not be afraid, that fear quencher, our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that he is with us and he gives us the strength through his spirit to conquer all fear in his name and for his glory. Rise up and face your fears and defeat your fears. And may God help you to do that in the story of your life. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the example of Mordecai and Esther in how they didn't run from their fears, but they ran towards them and faced them and rose above them. Lord, give us the strength and courage to do the same in our life. Strengthen us, embolden us, give us every resource and reserve we need to face the things that paralyze us in our life. Bless us, Lord, as we continue the story of our life with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I leave a prayer of benediction with you this day. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who will present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only God, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, be all glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you this week in everything you do. May God bless you in what you put your hand towards. And importantly, may you know the abiding, strengthening, emboldening presence of the Spirit of God who removes all fear. May you be blessed this week. We're going to be back here next Sunday. We'll consider another part of the story of Esther that really reminds us of the very important truth that our past doesn't dictate our future. We look forward to encountering God through the story of Esther in that respect next Sunday, where I'll see you again here in this place. But in the meantime, be blessed and bye for now. Where did we come from? Why are we here? Where do we go when we die? What lies beyond and what lay before? Is anything certain in life? They say life is too short The here and the now And you're only given one shot But could there be more? Have I lived before? Or could this be all that we've got? If I died tomorrow I'd be alright because I believe that I have to work on the spirit carries on